Hi everyone, Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service office out of San Diego. Yes, I know you know uh, it's hot, especially inland areas, and the heat wave is with us for most of this week. But what you may not know is there's a potential for tropical moisture and perhaps significant tropical moisture besides just the monsoon, but coming up from the south. So let's talk about that here in this latest briefing. Here's some of the highlights. The hot weather will continue. So what we mean by hot weather is excessive heat, above average, anomalously warm, so high heat risk, especially in our mountains and deserts. Now the door and the weather pattern is open for not just monsoon moisture like we saw over the weekend and today, but also tropical remnants. So we'll talk a lot about that. Potentially tropical cyclone Hillary, if named, if it develops. Uh, offshore flow can also develop in this scenario, meaning coming from the east, blowing towards the ocean, so dry and warm initially. And just a year ago, we dealt with tropical cyclone K, and there was a lot of impacts with that system, even though it was just remnant moisture and remnant wind. Okay, uh, just to refresh your memory, back on September 9th, 2022, about 200 miles, that's it, off of San Diego. Tropical Cyclone K arrived before it turned to the left and uh, fell apart over the open water. Produced a lot of rain, widespread rain, especially in our mountains and deserts, as shown here. It also brought a much increased threat to thunderstorm activity, and we saw debris flows on September 12th. Before it arrived, it brought really warm temperatures to the coast. It brought offshore winds. Some of the winds were as strong as 100 miles per hour, yes, in the San Diego Laguna Mountains. So this type of scenario, not exactly the same, could unfold in the next several days. Okay, uh, the heat. Where are we most concerned about the heat? I mentioned the inland areas, especially the mountains and deserts as shown here. Heat risk, so departure from normal. Temperatures departing five to 10 degrees above normal. The orange and red shaded are the concerned areas with the red shaded being the most severe. If precautions are not taken, uh, you can suffer from heat exhaustion, especially in the outdoor activities or if you don't have air conditioning. The ocean temperatures. Uh, so we have a developing El Nino in weak phase, um, currently moderate, but when you average it over the couple months, it's still weak. You also see in the Eastern Pacific and the Western Pacific, there's uh, a lot of warm water, warmer than it should be, warmer than average. Also notice off the Baja, Mexico, uh, water continues to warm in that area, maybe related to El Nino water, the warmer water from the equator. That'll be conducive to tropical development like we've already seen. Speaking of which, uh, the potential name storm would be Hillary with the aerials pointed. We already have Fernando, that's expected to go to our west, and then Greg is well to our west. Uh, and weakening, moving away. So the tropics have become really active uh, over the past week in the Pacific, at least. Now, this region is full of tropical moisture right now, not just the warmer ocean, but a lot of tropical moisture. Some of that's being pulled to the west with uh, Fernando and with Greg. You can also see that there's a weak disturbance off the coast of California. That's what's keeping the marine layer deep but most importantly, that creates a door, a window, a pathway for potential tropical moisture heading our way. Now, the outlook is just that, uh, above average rainfall for all of California, especially Southern California into Nevada. This is for the time period uh, around August 20th through the 25th. With that will be cooler temperatures for our desert areas as well with the clouds and rain but potential warmer temperatures for the California immediate coast because of that offshore flow. Uh, this is a message we sent out today. We'll update this as we go forward, but there's not a lot of details that we know because the tropical cyclone has just started to develop. So we don't even know if it's going to fully mature and develop into a hurricane. Um, and then that path is not certain exactly where it's going to follow. That's usual with tropical cyclones. Okay, the path, how is it gonna unfold? Well, 
right now we're dealing with an upper level low pressure area that's keeping the marine layer deep, keeping it a little bit cooler or near normal on the coast. But we have this big upper level dome of hot air that extends from Oregon down to the southwest. Um, so these two are battling each other, if you will. Now the tropical moisture, or what could be tropical cyclone Hillary, uh, potentially could get drawn northward, as discussed. So the upper level storm on the west coast, it wants to hang out. It looks like it's going to hang out all the way through uh, August 20th. Notice what happens though. That starts to weaken an upper level ridge or new heat dome forms over the center of the country, the plains, the Midwest, Northern Texas. And that looks like it's gonna really take over. In fact, um, by early next week, that takes over so much, you have a massive dome or heat wave over most of the country, but you still have this pathway for tropical cyclone Hillary or any remnants of that that could get into Southern California as early as Monday or Tuesday of next week. So we got to keep a close eye on that more than just monsoon. The latest prediction, this will be updated at least twice a day. So this is old news if you're looking at this three days later or even one day later. But to give you an idea of what we're looking at, this is the expected potential rainfall with our deserts being at the highest risk, but even potential for widespread rain on our coast. Some of that rain would come in uh, initially this weekend with bands uh, if this tropical cyclone does develop and if this gets more than just a monsoon type of situation. Uh, and then the heavier rain could come in late Sunday into Monday, possibly some of that lingering into Tuesday of next week. So the thunderstorm potential uh, initially is just in our mountains uh, and some of our high desert areas in the southerly flow, but then it potentially expands uh, to a lot larger of an area, a lot larger of an area, potentially this weekend into Monday, where almost any location in Southern California could see showers and could see lightning. This is the recap of what we talked about. Um, this will be updated as new information comes in later in the week. Uh, but it's important to note that this is still several days ahead. A lot of the details are not known, but the potential for tropical cyclone remnants is definitely there, more than just monsoonal type of flow. And before that arrives, we typically can see, like we did last September, an offshore flow, an easterly wind, warm conditions on the coast, increased fire weather potential, and then boom, uh, you get clouds and rain, and some of that rain potentially heavy. So stay tuned, everyone, uh, for additional forecast information as we go uh, into the weekend and early next week and the event becomes a little more certain. Thanks a lot for tuning in.